All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my impressions for Ori and the Will of the Wisp. So I was a huge fan of the first game. I absolutely loved Ori and the Blind Forest. And that game, I would say was a sleeper hit the year it came out, which was almost five years ago, because not a lot of people knew exactly what to expect. I mean, the game looked good, you know, before it came out, but we never n exactly knew it would be that good. It put the industry on notice, it put a lot of other games on notice, especially in the indie atmosphere, because Ori and especially The Will of the Wisp is kind of like a indie game with AAA um, resources and uh, backing behind it, I guess you would say, right? Uh, so it definitely put the industry on, on notice and it gained a lot of notoriety as well as Moon Studios, the developers, uh, when the first Ori released. Now they've released Ori and the Will of the Wisp and there were a lot of improvements they could have made um, in, this, uh, in, in this sequel from the original and they definitely did, okay? This game, from what I've played, I played about three hours and I can say this game is amazing. One thing about Ori and the Blind Forest was it was much more of a kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna say bare bones platformer, but it was somewhat of a paper thin platformer uh, with a few uh, decent abilities, right? Now they've added a lot more depth to the game. Uh, there's more depth in the in the combat, in, in the platforming. Um, they've, uh, e even the animation somehow looks better. And you know, the animation, which I will get into a little bit more, but it's like this living water, pa water painting. And it's absolutely a beautiful game. So focusing on the gameplay a little bit. So there are more there are weapons in in the game now um there is more of a focus on weapons that you could uh that you get and can buy from the weapon master um and what i like about these weapons you by the way so there are three weapon slots i believe that you can um equip different weapons to and what i love about the weapons is the the attacks are directional because Ori is a game, and I'm playing on hard by the way, it's a game that can definitely be very challenging. And it's one of those games where you have to be very precise with your attacks and very precise with your movements. So it's great that it has directional attacks. Um, you know, the downward attack is, is, is an actual different animation from, you know, your basic uh, attack. And there's also upward attacks. And depending on which, which and your enemies react uh, to which attack you use. Uh, if you do an upward attack, the, an enemy actually goes flying in that direction depending on the type of enemy. So there's a, a little bit of strategy uh, to using the directional attacks. And the controls are a little bit floaty naturally in Ori, um, which kind of, which you kind of need it to be, but I wish like, for example, um, in certain scenarios, if I push down on the uh, on the uh, analog stick, that it would kind of like push Ori down because there's some um, scenarios in which you don't want to float, maybe to avoid a hit or maybe to land more precisely. Uh, but you know, he's just naturally the controls are naturally floaty and he's naturally a floaty character so that's the only like problem i had with the controls is i wish they were at least uh, i wish you could at least adjust the the floatiness to ori right um but i i love the use of the the weapons and everything like that it's added it's added a, a, a very in-depth um combat to the game which the which the first one lacked as i said it was more about uh platforming um and being evasive and to be honest i don't remember all the mechanics and all the abilities and features that were in the original ori but i know it wasn't as much as it is in this game uh there's also spirit shards spirit shards are pretty much buffs or passive abilities uh that you find uh throughout the world and not uh, in a lot of these abilities you're not going to just naturally find on your direct path 
uh, Ori is a Metroidvania type game. So you will have to do backtracking on your own to find some uh, abilities and unlocks that you weren't necessarily able to access before um, due to not having the ability needed. So, you, so you're definitely going to want to backtrack a lot. And that's one of the, the, the parts of this game that I enjoy the most is getting an ability, going back, um, and, and uh, accessing an area where I couldn't before. And you know if you've gotten everything in an area because if you look at your map, the game tells you, you know, the percentage of collectibles uh, that you've gotten uh, in that specific area, right? Some, some examples of like spirit shard abilities are like clinging uh, to walls, taking less damage, doing more damage. And you can only equip three of these, at least where I'm up to in the game. I don't know if they allow you to equip more the further you get, but you can only equip three of uh, three of these, but you can collect a bunch of them. So if you go in the the, uh, the the menu system, you can see all the spirit shards that you have, uh, but you can only choose from three, as I said, as, at least as far as I'm at. Um, the only other thing in this game that also bothers me is uh, having to look at the map so often. So the map is, is very important in this game, especially if you're somebody who wants to make sure they've collected everything. You will have to look at your map to see if there's any uh, areas that you didn't go to yet, if you forgot to uh, explore. And that <laughs> leads to you constantly pressing the map button because there is there is no kind of mini map in the game. And that's kind of annoying. Sometimes I'm pressing the map button like every you know, 10 seconds that can sometimes be annoying. Uh, also in the menu system is your is your inventory, of course, which mostly holds key items. Uh, there's also a side quest in the game. I don't believe that was in the original Ori, uh, even though it had this um, kind of, uh, even though it was the same type of um, layout and, and level design, uh, which you could go back and explore. There weren't any side quests as far as I remember. Um, and don't let the, you know, I, and we, as gamers now we should we should know don't let the appearance of a game fool you i'm pl me playing this game on hard is absolutely a challenge okay uh especially and the enemies i've ran into um do maybe do like two stocks of damage currently i have four stocks of of life and you can unlock more life stocks you got to find them uh throughout the throughout the map throughout the uh the map um a lot of the times they are hidden so you have to be you know very very uh, meticulous with exploring um, especially if you're playing on a harder difficulty you're gonna need to collect everything um, to want uh, to increase your you know your health capacity and everything like that now spirit trees spirit trees were in the original Ori it's the way you uh, gain active abilities um, such as double jump that's the way you get your first weapon in the game um, which is the spirit edge which is pretty much the spirit sword so you get the other weapons such as the hammer I unlock uh, or the spirit smash uh, but through the weapon master um, by using the currency you collect in the game the yellow orbs uh, but the first weapon um, your spirit edge they actually uh, you know give that to you through the spirit trees which are also throughout the game and you gotta look for those to collect all the um uh, active uh, abilities that you need to use as i said the visuals are beautiful um you know the game is literally like a living uh water painting uh there were reports of technical issues prior to the game releasing and a little bit after i haven't encountered any issues whatsoever um so i can't speak on that i've encountered no bugs there were people speaking about um they were having saved game bugs uh in their games i think being erased or becoming corrupted which obviously sucks um I'm playing this game at 4K, uh, you know, um, I'm get. of course, this game is not very demanding, so I can go up to 120 hertz, you know, even higher, 144. Um, and the sound design is fantastic also. Um, as far as the story goes, I wouldn't say Ori, ha so Ori has a story, but it's more of a plot or a narrative, but it's not necessarily a, uh, you know, a story in the conventional uh, ways of how we, uh, what we consider a story to be. Um, so it's more of a plot and it, and it is a little bit, it is somewhat, uh, dialogue and text from, from the characters and everything like that. So it is definitely a, a story in, in the sense that you know what's going on and, um, 
you know, it, it follows a sequence of events and everything like that. It's not just gameplay for anybody who's who's uh, never played before, but it definitely just focuses on the gameplay, mainly focuses on the gameplay. So yeah, I mean, those are my impressions. I'm loving the game. The game is amazing. It's a must play. Uh, so yeah, let me know what y'all think about Ori and the Will of the Wisp. If, you, if you've already played it, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload a video. And, uh, you know, consider becoming a member by hitting the join button. So that's it, y'all. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll check y'all later. Peace.